have you ever wondered what the statistically saddest Radiohead song is? Okay, well, follow-up question. Have you ever wondered what would happen to somebody if they listened to only the saddest Radiohead songs for six hours straight in some MK Ultra type psychological experiment? All right, well, I have. I mean, Radiohead's discography is pretty much entirely devoid of happiness, and they are well known for that being the case. And whether you love that about the band or you hate it about them, it's pretty undeniable that they're really good at conjuring up those negative emotions. So you're telling me you're not even like a little bit curious? Well, I can't help myself. I am committed to finding the answers to my questions. But uh, I don't really know how I'm gonna do this. I mean, I'm an idiot. I do not have the music theory training to analyze every single song and compare them to one another, finding out just how sad they all are. But you know what I did learn in school? Was how to use my resources. And if it's not the paper of the kid in front of me I'm cheating off of, well, it's just gotta be the internet. And by some absolutely crazy coincidence, there happens to be a perfect resource for this exact thing already on the internet. And this is it. Allow me to introduce you to the Gloom Index. It's pretty much the study guide for those questions I asked at the beginning. And without it, I probably wouldn't have even been able to start making this video. So everybody say thank you to the Gloom Index. Thank you, Gloom Index. So as you can see, this line graph is plotting the level of sadness of each of the Radiohead albums. And the colorful points adjacent to each album ranking is the ranking of each song. They're ranked on the same scale. That scale is their Gloom Index value. But Liam, What's a Gloom Index value? Well, that's a great question. From 0 to 100, it is listed on our y-axis, and this is the equation to figure it out. If you understand that, good for you. It was created using Spotify's built-in metrics that have song data and other metadata in them that almost anyone can access. But how exactly is Tom York's statistics homework over here supposed to help me answer my two questions? In terms of the one and only saddest Radiohead song, this thing could just give me the answer right away. But I kind of want to come to my own conclusion based off human emotion, not just raw statistics. And the best way to do that is by answering my second question. What would happen to somebody if they were listening to only the saddest Radiohead songs for hours straight. They would for sure be able to tell you which one is the soat. Saddest of all time. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down and listen to every song that's on the index from happiest to saddest. And by the end, I should be able to tell you which one is the true saddest Radiohead song. Also, I'm affectionately naming this experiment everywhere at the end of Radiohead. And that's because of this six hour experience seeming eerily similar to another six hour experience. Will I be crying by the end? Who knows? Will I be laughing? I mean, probably not, but screw it. I mean, hey, it could happen. But one last thing before we get stuck in. Because I don't want to edit six hours of me listening to Radiohead, I'm going to relay my experience to you through a documentary style. It'll be great. Trust me. You'll see. Okay, Tom York and the boys serenade me. Okay, so as you just saw, I've decided I'm going to split up this experience into sections. This first one being Gloom Index values 100 through 70. I tried to split it up based on the music and less on even amounts of songs or index values. Oh, and if you're wondering, this was the track list of songs in this section. In fact, if you would like to listen along, well, I mean the best you can, I made a Spotify playlist which has all the songs in order and a link to that will be in the description. Anyway, the first track on the list was 15 Step. This one is unique and very important to talk about because it is basically alone at the very top of the index. In fact, there are no songs remotely close to this one on the index. And I could definitely hear why almost immediately. Okay, so um, one song down, about to go. It's probably gonna get like a little bit sadder after this song, but then it should be like a gradual descent. I mean, it can't get, can't get that bad, can it? It is widely known at this point that 15 Step is Radiohead's most upbeat and almost happy song. And I think it was definitely that pure and almost innocent tone that kind of helped set those expectations that I was just talking about. After 15 Step, I figured this would be a very slow and gradual descent into sadness, of which I probably wouldn't experience that much in this first section. But the moment I realized those expectations were very wrong was around Packed Like Sardines. Okay, yeah, that's definitely not that slow descent I was talking about. It was definitely a jump downwards towards emotions that the first songs didn't really unpack. And when I tell you it was an uncomfortable transition, I'm not kidding around, but in terms of just the starkness of a transition, Transition, nothing compares to the absolute leap into the abyss that was fitter, happier. Weirdly, it was one of the most
most dramatic changes in tone I experienced throughout the entire six hours. And this was entirely because of the nature of the gloom index itself. I don't know exactly what statistics go into making that equation, but I could take a pretty solid guess that lyrics are probably part of it. And fitter happier is almost all the evidence I need to prove that theory. In my opinion, this song doesn't belong here. Not even remotely. It's horrifying. That android voice is just droning over these chilling sounds and chords that sends shivers down your spine. But the lyrics, the lyrics are a laundry list of all the ideal ways to live your life as told to you by society. So it isn't a critique of those ideals, nor is it even an apparent commentary. It's just straight up saying this is how it is. So as far as statistics go, which don't understand the nuance of OK Computer's themes, it sees this song as a positive one. So what happens after this? scary little interlude that we have. Well, it definitely does mark a change because for the rest of the section, the songs slow down a bit and have more of a recognizable kind of daunting Radiohead feel. Think the subtlety of House of Cards and the heaviness of Idiotech. Those two attributes combined define the latter half of this section pretty much perfectly for me. Alright, tracks 69 through 40. This section was a lot different than the first section. The first half of the first section was a lot of Radiohead songs that are actually unusually, noticeably happier. And if they aren't happier, they're at least neutral sounding. Yeah, towards the end of the first section, we saw some songs dip their toes into some drowsy kind of sadness, but it never really quite felt sad. This is where things kind of pick up slightly. What's interesting is that tracks 69 through 40 here are mostly made up of high tempo classic rock sounding songs that honestly sound more focused and badass than they do depressing. I was mostly nodding my head through this whole section rather than frowning with despair. To give some examples, I Might Be Wrong makes an appearance in this section and it is definitely a nodder. I always forget just how good the guitar is in this song until I hear it again. I mean, it is incredible. Two Plus Two Is Five is also here and it's one of my favorite Radiohead songs because it is another head banging song. Also, Paranoid Android is in the latter half of this section, and even though, yes, it is a roller coaster of emotions, it primarily fits into that classic rock feel that we're talking about. I mean, Jesus, man. So, in general, if that more energetic feeling of the more classic rock songs makes you sad, then this section might be a little bit more jarring. But for me, I wasn't really getting that sad at this point. Well, at least not yet. But don't let me fool you, there is a very apparent shift from the beginning to the end of this section. The section starts off with songs like Sit Down, Stand Up, Thinking About You, Morning Mr. Magpie, and the National Anthem. By the end, it's nearing a more cynical tone of the same rock sound with songs like Electroneering, Dex Dark, Fost Arp, and Scatterbrain. Oh, and one more important thing to mention is that the Pablo Honey tracks in this section were a total curveball because at this point into these six hours of Radiohead, I had a general idea of the descent into sadness that I was going along. Every time a song would end, I would have some expectations around what I would be hearing next, both in tempo and tone. But every time a Pablo Honey track would come on, I would get jolted back into a very different world. By that I mean, these Pablo Honey tracks sound very different. They're more raw and 90s sounding, so it's very different than the other types of Radiohead sounds that are in our track list. But anyway, to define this section as a whole, I would say that it was a more subtle increase in sadness than the first section that was conveyed through Radiohead's more classic, rock sounding songs. You know what? I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. The first two sections were a playground compared to index values 39 through 20. Despite covering the smallest range of index values, this section has the second most songs in it and still manages to have a glaring difference in sadness between the first and last song. While the first two sections were heavy and intense, this section approaches a more threatening and empty feeling. Knives Out starts this section off perfectly because it's almost energetic enough to belong in the latter part of the last section, but the lyrics come back in to kick you onto the floor and beat the shit out of you while you're down. I don't think I realized just how, like, aggressive those lyrics are. I mean, shit, that's... Yeah, the chord progression is kinda sad, but without the pessimistic and violent lyrics, it wouldn't even be close to its final placement on the index. But Knives Out, being where it is, proves my point about this section having a very distinct progression of sadness. Compare Knives Out, the first song, to the second to last song in this section, Codex. It's a much more empty feeling track than Knives Out is with its heavy reverbed pianos and its haunting vocal samples. And don't get it twisted, there isn't just some steep drop off of sadness after Knives Out or at a random part throughout the section. This is definitely that slow descent into sadness 
that I was patiently waiting for back in the first section. And no one song can convey that transition better to you than everything in its right place, which sits halfway through this section. This song was such a pivotal moment in this experiment, and for a multitude of reasons. First of all, this track is coming off the back of Glass Eyes, a hopeful yet depressing track that is outroed by a string section slowly fading out. So the moment that notorious intro to everything in its right place fills your ears, you are catapulted into a whole new realm. You have now entered the second half of the penultimate section of Everywhere at the end of Radiohead, and it's gonna make you remember. Honestly, this song manages to sound very important. It kind of sounds like one giant transition for the entire Radiohead discography. In my eyes, this song is the perfect blend of the first half of this section with its high tempo and rock sensibility, and the second half of this section with its gloomy chord structure and emotionless lyrics. While it makes you wanna punch a wall, you also kinda wanna cry. But as you do progress through the rest of this section, you'll encounter tracks that leave you with a lingering feeling of this emotionless negativity. Songs like Tree Fingers, Nude, The Tourist, and Codex carry you nice and gently into our last section, which is where shit gets real. So, uh, here we are, guys. The last few songs, the statistically saddest Radiohead songs. I can't say I'm necessarily surprised to be saying this, but these last songs are truly depressing. These tracks have a certain stretched out sound to them, like the songs themselves are sad and are just gonna drag you through the mud along with them. Just look at the first two tracks, We Suck Young Blood and Videotape. Both have leading piano lines that do very little but actually say a lot. They don't run up and down the piano, they're not doing a bunch of crazy stuff, but at the end of the day, when you pair it with the rest of the song, they're actually both very impactful piano lines. These songs also have the slowest tempos out of the rest of the entire experiment, which probably contributes to a lot of that dragging along feeling. Not to mention the drums in this section, or rather the lack thereof, really make these songs sound empty and soulless. Exit music for a film serves as the acoustic pinnacle of sadness in the experiment, hitting about as hard as any OK computer song can. Those ambient people noises throughout the song kind of left me feeling uneasy, and the song was a little bit eerie because of them, but you cannot forget to talk about that killer synth sound at the end when you bring up this song. Pyramid Song is our last goodbye to Amnesiac, and man, does it go out with a bang. The piano chord progression in this song is honestly unlike any other, and sticks out among the rest as a song that really manages to conjure up a lot of emotion. Then, Motion Picture Soundtrack is our final farewell to Kid A, and honestly, I couldn't think of a better third to last track than this with its solo organ sound and its creepy little orchestra. This song, despite sounding like a conclusion, manages to build tensions for the last two tracks. Because if this is number three, what the hell is number one gonna sound like? But at this point into the experiment, I was pretty much resigned to whatever the band wanted to do to me. As motion picture soundtrack was fading out, I did expect the worst, but I accepted it. However, the last two tracks are honestly a cruel joke. Give Up the Ghost is an optimistic and harmless track that doesn't feature any of the minor key, depressing, or scary sounds that we've come to know. It's just a perfect alley-oop into the last song, True Love Waits, which, by the way, does not miss that dunk. It breaks the fucking backboard. True Love Waits is the only song with an index value of one. In fact, Give Up the Ghost, the second saddest song, has an index value of 6.46. This song is sad, man. This track has gained massive popularity among Radiohead fans because it is the final official version of the long-teased track of the same name. And yes, its many evolutions were sad, but nothing compares to this final version off of Moon-Shaped Pool. This is by far the saddest song Radiohead has ever written, and it's not really that close, statistically speaking, too. Not only is the piano chord progression perfectly written to sync at the end, just building and releasing tensions, but the lyrics are personal and emotional. Give Up the Ghost really had me thinking I was gonna get let off the hook, but no. No, no, I was very, very wrong. In terms of my experience with this last section, it was a pretty, pretty exhausting way to end things. Not only was I tired and restless from listening to six hours of Radiohead, but I was also, believe it or not, getting a little bit sad. But that is all 101 songs. So what did we learn from all this? Well, I already answered my two questions. The saddest Radiohead song of all time is True Love Waits. And what happens to someone when they listen to every Radiohead song in order of sadness 
well, they get sad. I don't know. I don't know what you expected. But in all seriousness, there were actually some pretty interesting conclusions I drew about the Gloom Index. For example, my interesting discovery about lyrics and their relationship with the Gloom Index values. I mean, a lot of songs that I didn't cover slash skipped, I did so because they just didn't make any sense where they were. The most egregious, in my opinion, misplacement was Let Down, which is apparently the fourth saddest Radiohead song. I don't know. But another example of a discovery that I bet a lot of you caught on to was that a lot of the songs lower down on the list were piano-based songs. If I had to guess, it probably has a lot to do with the fact that Tom York only picked up the piano once they were neck deep in their much more sad experimental style. But groundbreaking discoveries or not, this experience was wild. Six hours of Radiohead only getting sadder as it goes on will do something to a person, and I hope I relayed my experience at least okay. But that is it. That is all I have to say about this weird, weird experiment. Everywhere at the end of Radiohead is officially completed. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would really, really appreciate a like or maybe a subscription. This video took me a long ass time to make, so it would really mean the world to me. Other than that, I will see you all later. Peace the fuck out.